Okay, we've got 10 minutes and a 10-player list on Sportsnet. This is Sam Constantino's NHL Draft Rankings, published yesterday. This is indeed the April edition of the list. Now, I'm going to go out there and read a whole bunch of stuff from other websites while reading this Sportsnet article. The reason why is because the Sportsnet articles for the scouting reports... They're all just so, so bad, and they don't have any information on the players. For example, you have Marco Casper ranked as the 14th overall player on this list right here. Leaving Austria to play against better competition is admirable and speaks volumes about where he is trying to take his game. What the heck does that mean? What does that tell you about Marco Casper, the hockey player? It doesn't tell you anything. That's what. So we're going to go over onto the top 10 prospects on Sportsnet. We're going to go through this quickly because 10 minutes, 10 players, it's going to be a minute per player. And we're going to go over scouting reports as well on Dauber and Elite Prospects just to highlight how these guys have played. The 10th best prospect in the NHL draft, according to Sam Constantino, is Connor Geeky out of the Winnipeg Ice. This is what they have to say. Attaining a balance between skill, creativity, and physical play remains the goal. Project how quickly that will all come together will give a better sense of where he ends up in this draft class. At the very least, it does say he is a center, and if we go over onto his Elite Prospects page, he had produced really well this season, 70 points in 63 games played. Dauber says that he has a high-end offensive talent with great size, who can beat opponents with his hands, vision, or shooting ability. He needs to clean up his skating stride and add some pace to his game, but he has potential to be an impactful offensive weapon in the National Hockey League. Connor Geeky is indeed the brother of Morgan Geeky, who is a Seattle Kraken member right now. Connor is 6'4", 205. He is a very big boy, and he's got some very good skills that allow him to be all over the map when producing offense. Going back over onto Sportsnet, the ninth best prospect, according to Sam Constantino, is Joachim Kemmel. He is getting a chance to regroup by playing within his peer group at the U18s, and it should be hugely beneficial. What does that even mean? What does that mean, Sam? What does that tell you about the player? Ay ay ay. Elite Prospect says this. He is a skilled winger with very good shooting skills. He plays with a lot of jump and can get creative with the puck to beat defenders. He's willing to shoot, and he is an entertaining player. We also made a full-on scouting report video on Kemmel and the services he provides. His scoring did drop off towards the end of the year. He ended off with 15 goals in 39 games and 23 points. Not the same crazy goal production he had to start off the year, which is why he was even ranked in the top of the draft in the first place. But then you go over on to the eighth overall spot. Sam Constantino has Brad Lambert here in this position. There's no denying that he's a top 10 talent in this draft, but where does he fit, if at all, inside the top 10 players picked? Now, normally I repeat myself, what the hell does that mean, Sam? You're not telling us anything about the player, but he did include a player card with Brad Lambert and... There is an entire scouting report over here. He is a quick, fast, streaky, skilled energy forward. We saw a full display of his ability at the Shortened World Junior Championships. The most identifiable viewings of his talent have come against his own age group in international events, where he has played to that identity of being a point-producing phenom. So... There is indeed some information you're going to be able to get on these prospects in this article, just not on every single list. As with the seventh overall spot, you have Jonathan Lekarimaki from Jorgarden in Sweden. Out ill since early March, it'll be interesting to see if he plays in the Worlds, and if so, will he be able to keep pace? Again, that doesn't tell you anything about the player, so we're going over onto his Elite Prospects profile, and we're seeing that this guy is an absolute goal-scoring machine. Seven goals, 26 games played in the SHL, but in the J20 League, he had 20 goals in 26 games. He has had more goals than assists in every league he has played in, with the exception of the U16 SM League in 2019-20, even during the international tournaments, like Karimaki was a goal a game playing for the U18 squad. He is a goal-scoring machine, and his scouting report on Dauber says that same thing. He's a pure goal scorer who can create his own opportunities with an array of deadly shots in his arsenal. He has the potential to produce in a top-six role at the NHL level. A lot more to learn about this guy than just, oh, he's out since early March. Will he be able to keep his pace? Sam Constantino scouting reports, man. You gotta love him. Number six on the list in the top 10 prospects is David Juracek, a defenseman playing out of the Extra Liga. After missing more than three months due to a knee injury, he's back and is a candidate to play in the men's worlds. Can he regain his place as the top defenseman in this class? Now, that actually tells you a little bit more than, like, 
I think the other ones do, which is good, because David Yurchek did indeed miss out on a huge portion of this season. But before he was injured, hey, he was producing pretty well, 11 points in 29 games in the Czechia League, and his scouting report here on Elite Prospects goes over why he is seen as such a valuable defenseman. Skating is the name of the game. He flows a fluid extension into a clean recovery to impart power and precision to his four-way ability. He can walk the line and get a shot through traffic or load up an absolute bomb of a one-timer. He's an extremely active defenseman, doesn't hesitate when he can activate from the offensive blue line to become a threat from the high slot. Juracek is seen by many people as the potential best defenseman in the class, but you also have yourselves the fifth overall pick here, or the fifth best player according to Constantino, Simon Nemich, who is also in that conversation too. Nemich slipped in a two-assist effort for the D1 gold medal winning Slovaks at the Worlds while playing for his club team in the playoffs. Okay, that's a okay scouting report, but either way, Nemich is one of these offensively dynamic players. He's got 26 points in 39 games. He is one of the highest producing defensemen in the Slovak League ever. And if you go over to his Dauber page, he is a strong two-way defender who controls the ice in all three zones, has the potential to grow into a top-pairing defenseman at the NHL level. He shovels the puck along the ice nicely, he's got some good skating, good mobility, and I really am a big fan of Nemec, is why we made the Why I Want video about him, so you can go ahead and check that out if you want a bigger look at him. Going over to the fourth best player Constantino has on his list, though, Matthew Savoy ended the regular season on a three-game multi-point heater. A lengthy playoff run in the rugged WHL will be a great test for this Winnipeg Ice Center. Savoy this season had 65 games played, 35 goals, 55 assists for 90 total points, and if you go over to his scouting report on Dauber, it says that he is a dynamic offensive weapon that can beat defenders in a variety of ways, elite raw skill that should make him an impact player at the NHL level. Now, earlier on in his career, Savoy was touted by many, myself included, as a potential first overall pick. Does he still have that ceiling? I do say so. I do think that his offensive tools and capabilities are so strong that should you decide, hey, let's go against the grain, let's take Matthew Savoy first overall instead, there are realities out there where I can see him being the best player out of the draft because of his offensive skill, his passing, his shooting, it's all there for Savoy. Going over to the third highest prospect on Sam Constantino's list, though, Uri Slavkovsky. This scouting report blows my mind. Continues to play solid minutes for a team competing for a league title, but this will almost certainly keep him out of the U18s. Like, that doesn't mean anything. Your average Sportsnet viewer who does not know anything about the prospects is going to read this article and say, okay, what does that mean? I don't know anything about this player. It doesn't even have his height or his weight, just his position, team, and his name. Uri Slavkovsky is a big boy, 6'4", 218, a left-handed left-wing player, and he is an absolute behemoth. This season for the Liga, he's got 10 points in 31 games, but he came alive where for the Olympic Games, Slovak team, he had himself 7 goals in 7 games. He was the top U18 performance ever at the Olympic Games, and that in itself is pretty extraordinary. Slavkovsky is a big power forward body winger that's got himself a really good ability to snipe pucks in left, right, and center, and a a lot of these skills have put him on the top of draft boards, however, Sportsnet, Sam Constantino having him at 3 is actually one of the higher rankings on here. But either way, moving over to the second best prospect here on Elite Prospects, it is Logan Cooley, who is actually given a, another one of these player cards right here. Sam Constantino writes, as the most dynamic player available, he wasn't lying when he quipped that I had him ranked too low in March at number four. Rising to number one is not out of the question here for this NTDP center. He is, according to Sam Constantino on the website here, an elite talent, a threat to produce offense every time he hits the ice. His IQ could be used in all situations if required. This is a player who could become a franchise player. It's hard to put into words his ability with the puck on his stick. Off the rush, he has the skill set to beat opponents one-on-one -on -one and take the puck to the net. Conversely, he at times will pull up and look to distribute, makes puck plays on his forehand and backhand, he picks opponents apart in small areas, especially on the power play, and he is a cornerstone addition for the team that drafts him. Now that is a scouting report. Man, and it even includes his stats right here. 63 points in 44 games with the NTGP, over a point per game as just an absolutely crazy good high highly skilled center. It's going to be cool seeing where he goes because, yeah, his last name is Logan Cooley. And then, of course, the first overall pick is supposed to be, according to the Sportsnet article, Shane Wright. Thanks to the finer points in his game and the details away from the puck, Wright remains the top player available. Again, doesn't really tell us anything about the player, but 
I guess, for what Shane Wright is. A lot of people kind of know that he is this highly skilled center that can do it all, a strong skater with great vision. He's got an excellent shot and the intelligence to impact a game in all areas. A potential franchise player, as dubbed by Dauber Prospects. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Sam Constantino and the April edition of Sportsnet's Top 10 Prospects for the 2022 NHL Draft. It's been fun going over this one, but of course this video was just me reading articles and reading Dauber Prospect links, so... I didn't really do too much of the work here. I just kind of put it together for you in a package that was a lot easier to digest and I think a lot more comprehensive than what the Sportsnet crew was able to go out there and say because, come on, Sam Constantino scouting reports. Some of them are okay when he really tries, but he doesn't try half the time. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about all this stuff, the draft, the prospects. Who do you want your team to take the most if you are projected to being in the top 10? I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.